You guys seen these commercials for uh, Wrangler jeans with a U-shaped crotch? Anyone seen these? If you haven't seen these, these are for the guys that are having issues with jeans, like their fat dongs rubbing against the jeans a lot. You're getting all chafed up, you need a little extra room. You know what I'm talking about, guys. <laughs> Just thinking about that the other day. It's a genius marketing move by Wrangler, you know, because if you think about the Wrangler jeans demographic, just add five dollars under the cost of a Wrangler jeans and make them pick between small dick Wranglers and big dick Wranglers. <laughs> just so I can see which one they pick. You know? I'm gonna go get some big dick Wranglers and just set them on my counter when I get a girl coming over. She walks by, she's like, oh really? It's like, yeah. Those are mine. Prepare for disappointment. <laughs> I think that the only time it's acceptable for a man to wear a fedora is when he's about to kill himself. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> the only thing wor you know the only thing worse than snorting on a coke off some dude's dick? It's when there's no coke. <laughs> Just sniffing some dude's dick. <laughs> Fucking terrible. <laughs> I told that joke to a girl at a bar the other day. I told that joke to a girl at a bar because it's the only joke I have that's like a joke you can tell it quick. And I told it to her. I said, you know, what's the only thing worse than snorting a line of coke off somebody's dick? And she said, snorting a line of cum. And I, I was like, you're right. You've ruined my joke. Good for you. And that's why I don't tell joke to strippers anymore. Because they always know something worse. <laughs> I found out... <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was. I was like sitting there and I was like, you know, how, how lucky of this joke to just fall into my lap. Literally. Mm. <laughs> I didn't realize that strippers, most strippers are lesbians. I don't know if you knew that, but most strippers are lesbians. And it was kind of surprising at first, but then I started thinking about it and I was like, you know, this makes sense. If... You know, dudes are rubbing dicks on me all day at my job, I probably wouldn't want to fuck with them outside the office, you know? Just like, keep that shit out of work. Ruin that shit for me, you know? Wouldn't be into it anymore. <laughs> and you think about the guy, things that guys are saying to strippers, they're saying, you know, because as a guy, you can't really dirty talk good, because like, there's no way to describe being aroused, like, in a good way, you know? You, like, I got a boner. Like, that's too juvenile. That's a very juvenile way to talk about it. It's like a high school style. You could get, like, real aggressive and be like, I got a hard cock, you know? But that's like, you know, if you want to it's really, it's escalating quickly when you say that, you know? If you, if you want to start dropping cock bombs on a girl, you better make sure you're, you better make sure you're in a relationship or you're blackout drunk. Those are the only two ways that you can do that. If a girl's into it when you drop a cock bomb on her and you barely know her, then she's a whore. So you should fucking bag that shit because it's gonna get weird. People talk poorly about hookers because they suck dick for money. But I don't understand. I think it's bullshit because in my estimation, the only way to suck dick is when you're getting paid. You know? Because sucking dick probably isn't the funnest thing to do. Girls are like, we like it, it's cool. <laughs> no, no one likes it. Get paid for that shit. Give me the cash. Give me the cash. Don't get this indirect bullshit dinner. Come on, just pay me. <laughs> Fuck. Let's break down these societal standards already. Yeah. I think I'm going to start masturbating on cam on the internet for money. <laughs> Because, like, I'm not getting paid anything to masturbate right now, so even if just, like, one dude subscribes and gives me ten bucks, it's more than I'm getting paid right now. Yeah. It's fucking all upside. I'm leaving money on the table right now. <laughs> Masturbating for free. Some <laughs> bullshit. It would be weird, though, if I just had, like, one subscriber, he was just, like, a regular, you know? Like, hey, Frank, how's the family? <laughs> really good, yeah. Sit down, you know, get your business. <laughs> I'd have to get like uh, some sort of fetish to get some bumped up traffic in the community, you know? So I think I'd just start eating pizza while I masturbated, you know? <laughs> Combine two things I love. 
I can get some, I think I can get like five people. If I can just get like five subscribers, if I can make enough money in a week to just buy like a shirt and a sandwich, I'd be like stoked about that, you know? And like, I fucking masturbated this shit into existence. Fucking, what the fuck did you do this week, you know? Paint all over the place. I'm single. When you're single and you hook up with girls, it's very awkward. Because it's like when you're in a relationship, everything's very comfortable, everyone understands, you know what the girl wants. When you're single, you're like, I don't know, how, should, how weird should I be? What are we doing? We're asking questions, I'm just poking and prodding. Are we gonna have heavy pet? Are we gonna have anal sex? No one knows. It's like very, very weird. The only time you know when something's going down is, is when the girl says, do you have protection? And then you're like, we're about to fuck. We're about to fuck. And she's referring to the condom, and the condom sucks, but it's a necessary evil. You gotta get the condom. The only thing I don't like is that men always have to have the condom. I remember when I was in like sex ed class about the female condom. I remember about the female condom. You guys remember that shit? Anyone? Well, I fucking remember it. And I don't know what the female condom is. I picture it as just like this plastic sock. You just kind of like, like unfurl it. I don't know how you get it up there. I think you just need like a pool cue. You just gotta get it up there. That would be such a fucking baller move though if you were like hooking up with a girl and she was like, do you have any protection? And like, oh yeah, baby, just a second. <laughs> Spread them. <laughs> I just picture you like artificially inseminating a cow, you know, with the other glove on. But my name's Mike. You guys are cool. for the first time, we found my old library card from the county library, and I was gonna throw it away because I don't need it anymore. I was going to school at the time. If I needed a book, I could use a book at the school's library. And I was about to throw this card away, and my mom goes, wait, Derek, cut that up before you throw it away. <laughs> wait, why, mom? Why do I gotta cut it up before I throw it away? And she said to me, if someone's digging through our trash and they find that library card, they could take a book out in your name. <laughs> Let's follow that logic for a minute. If you're at a point in your life where on the list of shit to do is dig through trash to live, I'm pretty sure you're not going to find a Kent County library card and be like, yeah! What is the exchange rate for this and heroin? What do I get? I got all seven Harry Potter books. This got to give me at least. This got to give me some uh, some heroines, please. I'm so cold. I'm so cold. I uh, I do miss growing up. I do miss the '90s a lot. The '90s were a pretty chill time. Uh, one of my favorite shows growing up when I was uh, in the '90s was The Magic School Bus. You guys remember that show? That was one of my favorite shows growing up, and. Uh, we would watch it in school and stuff like that. But I came across it on Netflix the other day. And I was like, I'm gonna watch this. Never watch a show from your childhood when you're an adult. It ruins the nostalgia for it. Cause I'm sitting here watching it and as a kid, I was so excited. I wanted to be in that class. I wanted to go to all those places with this fun teacher. But as an adult, I'm watching the show and I'm just really pissed at how irresponsible this bitch is with other people's kids. <laughs> She's taking fourth graders to outer space, not even a permission slip from the parents. <laughs> yeah, Miss Frizzle. What the fuck? No wonder it's not Mrs. Frizzle. I'm, you're a crazy psycho bitch. Yes. She got a fucking weird ass lizard just runs around in the background. Weird. They had one episode where they taught the kids about the digestive system. What better way to do that than have one of the kids swallow his whole goddamn lunch, or swallow his whole goddamn class in his lunch. They shrunk him down, he ate him in his Cheez-Its. <laughs> and it occurred to me as an adult that, all right, well, usually when you eat things, there's only one way that they come out. And it occurred to me that this fourth grade animated class is about to get shit out of its other classmate. And I'm gonna watch it on a cartoon program. I got you, Brian. Uh, that guy, that's gonna be some major trauma for that kid. Are you kidding me? He's gonna be like, 
10 years from now, he's going to be in like a church gym for like some therapy sessions, and the guy's going to be like, tell him what, why they're there, and this guy's going to be like, my, uh, my uncle touched me when I was 10, and he told me not to tell. <laughs> why are you here, Arnold? Uh, well, uh, huh, I shit out my whole fourth grade class. <laughs> Just shit them right out there. It was just, it was devastating. Uh, they made a TV show about it. It's pretty bad. You don't say, they said anus on that TV show. You don't say anus on a kid's cartoon program. What's wrong with you, Miss Frizzle? How does that get by in parent-teacher conferences and, like, staff meetings? How are you going to sit in front of the principal and explain, like, okay, Miss Frizzle, we gave you, like, a $200 field trip budget, and you spent, uh... <laughs> $5.6 billion <laughs> taking kids to outer space for 30 minutes. That's great. <laughs>
like the cops are cuffing, <laughs> cuffing up, you know, and reading him his rights, and it's like, you're going away for a long time. Oh, you're good at football? Get out of here. <laughs> boys will be boys. <laughs> Here's a Heisman Trophy. Uh, go Florida State. Um, <laughs> Or Woody Allen, if you don't like sports. Either way, <laughs> famous people are assholes and they get away with the fuck they want. <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, my neighbor was practicing the violin the other day and it was really loud and it was getting kind of annoying. But then uh, I realized what I should have done is just read old-timey Civil War letters out loud to accompany it. <laughs> my dearest Martha. <laughs> It has been ten long years since... I don't think that war was ten years long. I think, uh, I think kids today are, are shitty and entitled and just uncreative because they never had to try to masturbate to scrambled porn. Never had to try to put that sexy puzzle together. I got good at it, man. I got a PhD in that shit. I got so good at it, I was like that guy in the Matrix, like looking at all the monitors, like I don't even see the code anymore. It's just blonde, brunette, three-way. It got to the point where I was just banned from several museums, because like a Picasso would get me about halfway there. Just sort of connecting the dots. Because that was the only option when you were my age. You had Channel 99 with the scrambled porn. Or you had porn out in the woods for some reason. I don't know what that was about. There was always porn out in the woods. <laughs> like, some, is this some weird, creepy, pay-it-forward system where a guy with a mustache and a members-only jacket is just walking out there like, I'm gonna leave this porn under a log for a 14-year-old to find. <laughs> it's the circle of life. <laughs> Porn rules the world, too. Every time there's a new invention, somebody figures out how to get porn on it. You know, like, when the internet first came out in the early 90s, they were like, this is going to change everything and how we communicate and solve problems. And the whole world went, can we watch people fucking on it? <laughs> you can. <laughs> the first guy who ever, like, wrote on the side of a wall of a, of a cave was probably like, this is a picture of a man. And then his buddy came up and went, this is his dick. <laughs> porn. <laughs> And that's how I'm going to leave you guys tonight. My name is Sean Daly. Thank you so much. I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but we got a pretty funny hood here in Grand Rapids. We do. The closer you get to the hood, the better the street names are. You know, like, uh, I don't know, Emerald, the Diamond, the Gold, the Temple, Prince. Or or college if you want to be a dick about it. It's not mine. All I'm saying is you gotta feel kind of stupid getting robbed in the corner of wealthy and prospect. You know what I mean? So I just got a puppy a little while ago. Love him a whole lot. His uh his name is Ali. His full name is Ali Oop. There it is. He's a good boy. The only problem with Ali is that like like he's he's a he's a lot of work. Like he's a mess as a puppy. Like he's just always getting into my shit. He's chewing on my stuff. He's pooping and peeing on the house. He's whining and crying. It's like, dude, this fucking sucks. Like I got a dog because I wanted a friend. I wanted something to play with. But now I'm like stuck with this obligation. You know what I'm talking about? So Jesus Christ, this is why Dad left us. This right here. <laughs> it's not all bad though to start telling chicks about my puppy. They're like, oh my God, you got a puppy. I want to see your puppy. And I'm like, ha ha ha. This is why Dad came back. <laughs> For that puppy pussy. That's right. You guys seem ready for this one. <laughs> Philip Seymour Hoffman uh, heard his last words were the same as his initials. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> Probably true. I don't care. <laughs> He's, he's a good actor, but I mean, that's, that's, those were those, those last words, for sure. So uh, I uh, found a really gay way to get my dick bigger. To uh, get somebody to fuck you up the butt. What happens is, if your dick's big enough, it goes in your butt, and it pushes all your inside dick out of your body, and you got a big old floppy dick. <laughs> Straight guys in here with small dicks are thinking about that right now. <laughs> Guaranteed. 
The other day I talked to my friend when he was on acid. That was a mistake. I went over to his house, I walked in the door, and he was like, Hi, how are you? I'm on acid. I was like, holy shit. He started talking to me for a little bit, and he was like, you know, it's just like everything in the world is like all sewer in my brain, and I can see it as that. And I was like, yeah, dude, that makes me, no, 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 you're on acid. And you started making a lot of sense. I'm like, shit. I'm not on acid. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, uh, Another uh, straight gay joke here. If you guys ever want to get uh, free drinks at the gay club, all you got to do is just uh, wait until one of the gay guys says something really gross and lewd. Then all you got to say is, ha, not, not drunk enough for that, you know? <laughs> and they'll be like, what's you drinking? <laughs> So, uh, been having a really smelly farts lately. Did I already say that? No. Been having really, really smelly farts. And my friends have been complaining about them, but I'm like, look at dude, it's not my fault. She's like, go to fart and I gotta poop, you know? <laughs> then all that extra flatulence has to push past the defecants and it comes out your butt smelling worse, you know? It's called the pre-defecatory theorem. It's a real thing. It happens every day. All I'm trying to say is I'm sorry for my farts. They're just going through a lot of shit right now, okay? <laughs> my favorite joke ever. I love, I love poop. <laughs> it's funny. It's funny stuff. <laughs> in fact, I'm, I'm a kind of poop shy guy. Like, I don't like pooping in public. I like pooping at the house. And uh, I actually had to poop here before the show. And there's a bunch of motherfuckers peeing. And I was like, I don't want to deal with you guys. I don't want you guys to hear my, my butt blast out some poop. You know? <laughs> so um, I did this new trick and it worked very well to get everyone out. I just went in the middle stall and I said, Does anybody care if I go poop? <laughs> Everybody left, one guy's like, long as it doesn't stink! <laughs> Alright, sorry for you. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> That's funny. I don't know what's going on over here. Oh, uh, I, like to, I like to rap. I like to rap sometimes. And I actually wrote a, a really shitty rap. That I'm, gonna, I'm gonna share with you guys real quick. Just give me a second. Just give me a big applause for live comedy real quick. Uh, this is the uh, shittiest rap I've ever written. Yo. Excremental liquidity, diarrhea, intelligence. People say you need shit in me, scatological relevance. Oh, uh, it's just a matter of fecal splattered all over your residence. I'm getting fatter from cheesy platters. My belly is evidence, yeah. My belly is evidence, so my titties are heaven sent, so my nipples need reverence. Come on. <laughs> Saw's kind of a class clown and Creston. And it doesn't take a lot for a white guy to be a class clown at a black school. <laughs> the class clown at Creston is pretty much the only white guy not afraid to say the N-word out loud. And now let me have my cousin stand up real quick. He's black, he's right here. So nobody be offended. <laughs> I do say the N-word a lot, though. That got me far in high school. That got me prom king, so. I just broke up with a girl last month, too. I moved in with her this year, so. It's a pretty big deal to me. I mean, if the sweatpants didn't give it away, I think you could have guessed I was single by now, but. Uh, I've been trying, like, uh, online dating and stuff. Let me tell you, man, everybody is catfishing everybody out there. I don't care what they say. I'm catfishing people. I'm trying to fuck, man. So I put my best picture two years ago. I worked out every day all summer on the beach. I was tan. I was cut. I had a nice little six-pack, man. Put that picture up. Girls are all over me on the internet. <laughs> So then you're trying to fuck, right? There's only so many times you can fuck with your shirt on. You know, you know that fat kid at the pool every summer who always wants to swim with his shirt on? That's me, except instead of a pool, it's pussy. I'm trying to fuck with my shirt on. 
I can do it two or three times, but eventually, I mean, I, I have to reveal this. <laughs> it doesn't always turn out well, man, but that's my time. Thanks for sticking with me, folks. Thanks, Brian. walk up to the bar earlier and this woman was standing there she saw me coming and she just said no <laughs> so I told her I said your lips say no but your eyes your eyes say oh hell no oh hell no white boy get your little cracky dick up out of here I ordered a triple with cheese, and you just a single, with one floppy little pickle on it. I swear to God, that's what her eyes were telling me, guys. No, it's weird too, like I didn't even get a chance to use my amazing pickup lines. Girl, you must be an envelope, because I just want to lick you before somebody else comes along and tears you apart. Girl, you must be my happiness because you never come. Girl, you must be a 7-Eleven because you got thugs up inside you 24-7. Yeah. Jesus Christ, girl! Close those goddamn legs! <laughs> the audience is making up their own tags to my jokes. I'm gonna get that one from you later, guys. <laughs> I notice everybody, you know, all these guys have these hipster beards nowadays. <laughs> Impressive beard, my friend. <laughs> no, and I think hipster beards are a lot like Asian women. Because I wish I could grow one on my face. <laughs> really, ma'am, I do. I, th I think about it a lot. <laughs> That's not a joke. Truth and comedy. <laughs> Everybody's mad about the government spying on us, the NSA spying scandal. And I gotta say, I gotta say, I agree. I do not think the government should be spying on us. White Americans. I, I can say that joke, this guy's my cousin, right? <laughs> Joe community. Uh, everybody's excited we have this new pope. Everybody thinks he's amazing. One of the first things he did is he went down on the streets of Rome and he laid hands on this guy that had this horribly disfiguring skin condition. And everybody is really impressed. How come when the pope touches a disgusting loser, he's a hero? But when I do it, it's called masturbation? <laughs> Guys, I like my women like I like my cars. Capable of going for long rides without any gas. I like my women like I like my cars. Asian. I'm less than 20 years old. You were with me for a second. The other day I put my dick in my coffee. Just so I could say I like my women like I like my coffee. With my dick in it. My dick is like a McDonald's coffee, people. You're probably gonna sue me if it ends up in your lap. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Sunday Night Funnies. Have a good night. <laughs>